Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're thrilled you're here. And if you're joining us live, it's a Monday, best day of the week. I mean, I like to say that every day of the week, but today we're going to really have an interesting conversation with Patricia Withington, uh, one of the directors over at Your Part-Time Controller. Patricia's going to be telling us that, yes, we can get on the same page and accounting and development can work together. Okay. Can they or can't they? I can't wait to learn. And Mitch, I'm sure you're in the same place. Mitch Stein has joined yeah. us as one of our new co-hosts. Say co-host co cohort three times fast. Not so easy, is it, Mitch? <laughs> I love being in the co-host cohort. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you said that so beautifully. I'm impressed. Mitch Stein uh, comes to us from Chariot based in uh, New York. And so we are thrilled, uh, Mitch, to have you with us today as we have this amazing, amazing conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. And of course, thank you to all of the sponsors that make the show possible. So thank you to Bloomerang, the American Nonprofit Academy, the Nonprofit Thought Leader, the Nonprofit Show, Staffing Boutique Inc., your part-time controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. So we've got quite the lineup of sponsors here. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Mitch. We do. And we're really proud to say that most of these folks have been with us since day one. And so that's even more special. Patricia Withington, Director at Your Part-Time Controller. What the heck are you doing on the nonprofit show on tax day, huh? Well, that's just it. Glad you said that. We don't do taxes. How about that? <laughs> okay, hair on fire moment. What do you do? Yeah, we are. We we do all the accounting for nonprofit organizations, and what they do as taxes is the form nine ninety, of which we prepare for it. But they have auditors that do their taxes, and that's really uh, for a nonprofit. That's the type of tax that a nonprofit submits. But as far as personal taxes, like all of us that are here today, um, nonprofits don't have to worry about that. Not for today, at least. I love it. Well, that we could not have had you on on a better day to help explain that. I know. <laughs> that's, day. Yeah, that's just awesome. Well, as part and parcel to this whole conversation, we're really going to be digging down into I'm going to say it's the age old conundrum, and that is can accounting and development work together? And so set us straight, Patricia, on this and and help us understand, like, first off, why do we need to know what the different purposes are and how do we even begin to respect that even? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I hear this a lot um, in the work that we do with nonprofits. And I'm, I'm actually a former CEO with two uh, youth development organization, a Boys and Girls Club and the Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And I will tell you that it works. It can work. And we, I think both sides actually complement each other. When you think about it, you know, you have the perspective of the left brain, right brain. And your right brain is your creative, your spontaneous, your emotional that's your RD staff. You need them. You need them to go out and talk with donors and talk about your program. And then there's the left brain. That's your accountants. That's IPTC. That's where we come in to do all the analytical work, all the organization work, all the structured work. You know, those financial reports, it's because we're organized. And guess who needs to see them? Both RD and your accounting people need to know and understand that. And so I really think it's, it's a balance. When you think of a nonprofit organization as a brain, you need both. You know, look at all of us. We need both to function. And so I have seen in the two nonprofits that I worked at, I encourage the behavior. You know, it's as a CEO, it's really tapping into both of their strengths and how you can complement that. And we, we, we got along so great, you know, I, I just can't imagine why it doesn't work because they both have such unique perspectives that you, you need to see and hear both. So I, I look at it from a complementary standpoint. Um, I think 
you know, the other thing too, when you look at the RD staff, their function, you know, I, I talk about respecting their, their purpose, why they're in the nonprofit. RD is getting money in the door. You need them. They're seeking what's out there. And guess what finance does? They get to manage it once it comes in the door. Manages what you have. If you don't have the money, you don't have anything to manage. Simple as that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to me because I think that um, a lot of times we put pressure on the outside departments that we work with because we don't understand what their function is. And right. they're just like, you know, why can't you row in the same direction? Why can't you help me fulfill this grant information accounting team? I need this information. And then the accounting team is like, why did they make this commitment? This isn't accurate for accounting. I mean, do, you know, it's, it's just such like a, we start out behind the, the, board. the even the starting line, right? Correct. The silo effect. And I think um, there's, there's one opportunity that you can kind of blend that opportunity in the sense of budget development. So in the beginning of the year, you know, for, for the um, organizations that I belong to, we always had two members or three members of the board um, finance committee and three members of the RD committee, which I was going to talk about a little later. But when you're developing that budget, you're going to see, I need to apply for three or four or five or six or 10 grants. And guess what? The RD staff are going to be working with programs to develop the narrative. And that's where you, it's all inclusive. You include your, your finance staff from the get-go who already understands that that money needs to come in the door in order for us to make budget. So you include them in that process. And, and I will tell you, most financial people, because they're so organized, they've already got a structure. They've already got a report format. They've already got worksheets. I guarantee you that tell me how many staff you're going to need. Tell me what expenses. They've got a format that you talk to me. We talk to each other. You tell me what we need and boom, I'm going to produce this for you. So you're, you're pretty much, and, and you've already prepared the budget, which is already structured in the format that you're going to be creating. So it, it, it's really 90, 90% there, I would think, you yeah. know, so it's, it, it's just another opportunity to work collaboratively and to to understand where everybody's roles are in the process. Um, and, and the other side to that too, is when you look at grant reporting, guess who does that? Accounting and finance, because you're, the, the, the RDN programs is gonna come to us and say, how did you allocate that? You know, I don't know that those allocations are correct. Well, yeah, they will be because we're going to work together and you're going to tell me up front where, you know, does this grant do program A, AMPI, or just program A? So that helps in that, that, that those monthly journal entries that need to be done when, the, when that money comes in. And oh, by the way, the expenses, you know, we're going to work to set up your GL accounting, your, your systems in your software systems so that we can accommodate that appropriately. This is the biggest complaint we at your part-time controller gets is help me manage my grants. I don't think the allocations are correct, <laughs> you know? Wow. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a collaborative, very much a collaborative. Yeah. And Patricia, when you talk about collaboration like that, I think part of the challenge between those departments is they have totally different language often and they're using different terminology. Can you, can you talk about some of the ways that we can present those differences and, and reconcile Like, What are some of your best advice for communication back and forth between those departments? Well, the, the biggest thing for us, you know, aside from the, the different language, you know, the pledge that that's a big one, that's different accrual mm -hmm. versus cash accounting. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. And I think, again, it's, it's understanding the language beforehand in the budget process. But the, the other biggest communication um, opportunity that I would see is accounting has their system. It's usually an accounting system. Mm -hmm. And then the donors or the development side has a donor management system. And guess what? They don't balance. They don't, they don't speak the same language. And I think the first thing to do is 
let's reconcile these two re reporting formats. And that was the other thing that I had instituted when I was at Boys and Girls Club is I had um, the, the finance director would give us a monthly you know, report of all the donations, grant proceeds, everything that came in, and we would give it to the development side. And, and actually our development associate did the reconciliation. She loved it because it was, oh my God, I don't remember that one. Oh, I'm so glad we have this. Oh, we need to do this. And oh, by the way, they have stuff that maybe accounting didn't get. You know, when you think about an opportunity to not miss things, mm -hmm. that that reconciliation between the two, it's a chance to get together, number one. Well, where'd you see that? Oh, well, when did that come in? Oh, well, that came in on the PayPal account. And oh, that came in on the United Way report. Or, you know, mm -hmm. in this day and age with so many systems that we can use to track donations online, through your website, through Give by Sell, Bloomerang. You know, there's so many platforms now, you're bound to miss something. And you have no idea. I mean, think about that missed acknowledgement letter if we're not reconciling on a monthly basis. So that's that's one big way of communication. Um, I, I just think that there's so many opportunities within the two systems to, to collaborate. I know that a lot of the other complaints we get is the lack of integration. And, and I, I put that little message out there as well is, you know, as you're searching for a new donor software, make sure it integrates with your accounting system. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard too many horror stories of, well, they told me it would integrate. Well, the platform's idea of integration is yeah, you have to download this report from the donor software and then turn around and upload it. So you need a third party integration tool. So try to avoid that one. Um, but I think another opportunity with, with these presenting the difference is board training. I think a lot of the, well, my numbers are right. And no, my numbers are right. It comes from the board because the board's getting two different reports. Neither one of them are wrong. What you need to do is explain to the board donation reports includes pledges and potential money and cultivation that the RD department has done. And the finance department is recording what came in the door um, or a pledge that you have invoiced. So two totally different, let's just say, objectives mm -hmm. of these I think board member education is a big one. Yeah, you know, we don't talk enough about that because I think um, a lot of boards think that, that that's already been done and they just sit down, they want to look at one piece of paper, maybe two pieces of paper, and it's done and on to the next thing. I got to drill down a little bit more with you and ask about like the culture of this and the mm -hmm. frustration and the sharing of knowledge. Do you ever advocate like, a standing meeting every Tuesday at two so that the two departments can get together or like, how do we institute an environment so that we are learning each other's, you know, language and we're actually trying to work together or do we just do it case by case as needed? Cause this yeah. can take also a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great point. And I really believe that that culture that you're looking for starts at the top. It's got to start with the CEO, the executive director, the board to, you know, why isn't programs involved in this? You know, why is it just RD and accounting? Because programs is involved in this as well. And so I think with starting at the top of the CEO, well, CEOs have monthly or weekly director meetings. So you've got your director of finance, your CFO, you've got your development director, always on the same page, always saying, oh, what about this? So, you know, that's what those weekly or, or monthly CEO executive director meetings are for, is to start the conversation there. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that a lot of where, you know, it goes back to the share and compare, where, where I see a lot of that collaboration is, um, for example, with us, with our events, do you know who was the most organized in getting you know, the um, 
when people come in for registration, like our, our golf events or our galas, my finance people are the most organized and structured people. Use their strengths, you know? And so the RD people just love that they didn't have to sit at that registration table because the finance people could be there. They're going to get those name tags out there and they're going to get it there quickly. You know, they're going to tell you who's missing. They're going to tell you who's that person, who's that person. And guess what RD gets to do? They get to walk around the event and mingle and meet the donors that they may have only met, uh, you know, on the phone or they just received a check. So they're like, I want to meet that person, you know? So it gives them that opportunity to walk around and meet. So it, it's such a collaborative effort, you know? And I'm going to go back to the budget committee. I wanted to touch on that. That's the biggest compromise. I mean, we had three members from the RD committee. We had three members from the finance. They would, when budget season was in, in you know, that's six months out of the year that you're doing budget. Well, we always gave RD, a, okay, we had a gala last year. We brought in 200,000. What do you think you can do next year? We, we allowed them to make that decision. The CEO and the, the finance people are not the ones to make that decision. Let RD people, they're there. They're in the thick of things. They know how that works. They know what their potential is for the next year. And so you've got your finance people that are sitting there hearing the same story, the language that you talked about earlier. You're learning from both sides. Um, but we were very, very successful in creating our budget with the help of both RD and finance. Um, I think grants, I think another, that's another opportunity to collaborate and to share and compare. Um, like we said earlier, programs and the RD people are writing the narrative. Finance is there to support you with the, with the, the budget report. And oh, by the way, there's a lot of other documents that need to go in that uploading those, you know, the grant reporting. You've got your, your current year, Financials, you've got the, the budget, you've got the Form 990. All of those are your typical tools. Well, guess who's got that and could give you that? Mm -hmm. Finance. So, it, it, and mm -hmm. then, oh, by the way, all we ask from finance is, can you give me a copy of that grant once it's finished so that I know how to come in and set up the accounting system for you? you know? Yeah. Patricia, Patricia, it sounds like one of the most powerful things you mentioned is that monthly reconciliation. Um, where that's like truly, can you be more in the a state of getting on the same page? Have you have you seen any examples where people have like a little party or like a bagels, bring in bagels or just something to make it fun and like add some flavor so that it's not a boring, dry, like tie out the books. It's like, no, we're both helping each other and doing something really critical. No, I thought I, that was like the best thing I'd ever done because I had this, this, um, Young, young woman that was the associate. And she was very eager to, to learn everything about the organization. And so I said, great, the first thing you're gonna learn is about finances. And she's like, I don't know anything about it. I said, well, welcome to finance. And she <laughs> learned so much by just having that one-on-one -on -one connection with our director of finance. I, you know, it was, it was just the greatest feeling for a CEO is to make that connection, give them that task, to work on and step aside, let them figure that out, work together. They would, you know, they could do breakfast, they could do lunch, but they could sit over, you know, that, those lovely finance reports that, that our director of finance would give her and she would stand through it and say, yeah, but then she'd find things like other pledges or whatever. Well, should we invoice them? They haven't come through on their pledge. So it was a constant, constant communication and working process. And, and then, oh, by the way, they get to the events and more collaboration, more, you know, we loved each other. We were just group huggers. We, everybody got along on the same page. Everyone understand it's the overall mission of the organization. You know, you just bring it back home, bring it to why you're there. And that all of that other junk, I would say, goes away. It, it really does. Think about the ultimate reason that you are there in that organization. And that those are those constituents that, that reap the benefits, really. Yeah, and, and 
I, I think something that's relevant to what you're talking about, that example of your, your junior associate that had to take on a whole new department to learn about finance, what are some of the best resources out there in, in both directions? People on the finance, finance side wanting to learn more about the development and fundraising process and folks in the fundraising teams wanting to learn more about the accounting and finance process. Uh, to me, the, the one way that you can do it is look at like Bloomerang. I'm going to do a pitch here because we use Bloomerang. Bloomerang has training where you can do there. And then on your finance side, of course, YPTC, we've got templates. We, we'd we be happy to, to teach people. And, and we do that all the time. And, and I have to say the one of the, the most surprising thing, I, I recently did a, a call with a potential client. Guess who they brought on the call to get accounting services? Their director of development. How cool is that? And, and I complimented that on, them on that. It's like, this is fantastic. You're already bringing her into the fold from the get-go. So that was, that was a pleasant surprise to see. And, and I've had that a number of times. So there's through both sides. It's, you know, Bloomerang, any of your, your major donors, they have training, get it on the system, learn that system, and then vice versa with whatever, whether it's QuickBooks Online, um, you know, there, there's opportunities there, but certainly both, both your development directors can do some training as well. And, and oh, by the way, bring some of those board members in there to train them, make it a, make it a big strategic planning party is to understand both, but we at YPTC happy to do that because we're so involved with grant management and that involves a lot of your development people, which is why this particular um, potential client brought their development director in because they have a lot of grants. Um, so there's there's all kinds of training like that. We've got a ton of webinars on, on our website. Please feel free to go there. Uh, YPTC.com is, is a great place to, to find some, some webinars on this subject. You know, I love that you brought this up about the grant management because you know, it seems to me and Mitch, I'd love for you to weigh in on this. It seems like there are organizations that just have figured it out and they do so well with grant management. And then it's like a self-fulfilled prophecy because they're so efficient and they do it so well and they know how to manage it. More funders are like, wow, they're rock stars. We'll invest with them because they know how to do it. And it's just an interesting thing. It's like the haves and the have can'ts, not have nots, but they have, you know. So do you see that, Mitch, I mean, with, with the ecosystem where you are? Yeah, I mean, if you get um, more grant funding, you can hire more folks to help seek out more grant funding, right? It's It definitely perpetuates. <laughs> and, and to your point about like the capacity and capabilities of, of managing grant processes and and applying for them, um, and then just being in a rhythm with those funders where you know what they're seeking, you build relationships. Um, so there's, yeah, there's definitely a lot of advantages there. Um, and I don't know, I, I would be curious to learn from Patricia, like how you find, what are some practical ways that folks on both sides of this divide, or hopefully not divide we talked about today, can boost their capacity for grant applications? Well, um... There's, there's a lot of resources out there like grant foundations. I mean, we have an internal person that does grant work either through federal, there's research, there's a lot of platforms out there that you can research. And, and I will say that one of the first things I did at one of the, um, the first organization is I sought out a grant to get a resource development person because I was having to do all that work. And so when you can pitch how much the organization can grow like having an RD person so that, you know, before it was on the finance person and the CEO. So there's there's some grant opportunities out there that I would start with if you don't have a development person to, to write a grant to get, and, and oh, by the way, make it a three-year grant because I think that's another big, big uh, mistake that they get a one-year grant and expect that RD person to produce miracles. It takes a good three years to get on a platform, yeah. a donor process going, so I, I encourage anybody that's going to write a grant um, for a development person, make it a three-year grant or at least three years of funding. But there's there's a lot of grant resources out there. Um, like I said, internally with YPTC, we have a, a person that can do that kind of work. He's primarily in federal, but he's now with foundations. So there's, you know, you look at some of your national resources, look at your local 
resources. Most of your community foundations have different grant opportunities, but I would seek ones that cater to your mission, to, you know, the population that you serve um, to, to, to look for different grant opportunities. Yeah, I think that's brilliant advice. And I think that, you know, just to, because you're researching something and you can't seem to find it, it's okay to call some of those funders and say, hey, this is what we need. Do you have something that might help us, right? Um, because sometimes I think that's some of the magical part. Ultimately, foundations and funders are looking for solutions to make organizations more sustainable. And if they're like, holy cow, yeah, well, let's, we can work on funding that or we can, you know, it might not be out there on the list when you do research, but I think that's a powerful, a, a powerful thing for all, all parties concerned, right? I, I think another powerful thing to do once you do get that meeting with that funder, bring your finance person in. Because, you know, that's the main thing that foundations want to see, financial stability yeah. and working together. And that they're going to get the information that they're looking for because you have those grant reports, you've got the grant application, and the you know from the start that you can demonstrate that you're a healthy organization and your finance and RD team is working together. Wow, what a message that could send! Because that's why do grants default? Yeah. Okay, that's like a mind blower, yeah. Mitch. I've never heard about that. Have you? But I love it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm I was curious. I was curious too, Patricia, for, you know, we've been talking about development and finance team, and I'm wondering, there's probably some people listening that maybe they don't have a finance team yet, and they're like a development team of one. When is the right time to be bringing in outside help from someone like YPTC? And, you know, what is that, um, the range that you fit well in, like what size of organization, maybe where they're too big and they need their own in-house person? Like, what's the right sweet spot for you all? Good question. Great question. You know, for us, we we serve all sizes. We, you know, there can be some, we're starting to help, you know, some of the smaller ones, just give them some resources of how they can get up and running. I would say the finance person is probably the first person you want because they need to set up your accounting structure, what have you. But then as mm -hmm. you as you grow, then we can be there to support them because you're not going to have all these grants from day one. You're not going to have all these donors. So it's a, a kind of move into that position. Um, but I think that your finance people are going to be your first ones because you got to set that up. And then you start bringing in your RD staff and then your program staff, things like that. But your part-time controller works with all sizes of organization. It really depends on what expertise. For a lot of your, your smaller ones, we encourage you to get an in-house bookkeeper. And then we can do the higher level accounting. You know, really it's that there's three levels in the accounting. There's the bookkeeping, controller, CFO. Our sweet spot, of course, is the controller and CFO levels. But we can do it all. You know, especially as you get, we can do special projects. We can do interim support. But I think as a new organization, there, there's a lot of, like TechSoup is the first place you want to go to get your systems. And then from there, mm. grow into each one of these I guess, softwares that you're going to need down the line and make sure that they all integrate. But we are there to help all sizes of, of organizations in some capacity, you know. Well, we Patricia Withington, yeah, you've been great and you've helped us a lot. A director of your part-time controller, check out YPTC.com. As Patricia mentioned, you know, uh, this organization has a lot of free resources. You don't have to be one of their clients to get this information, nor is it gated. So um, from podcast to broadcast, and certainly now five years of content with the nonprofit show, we've had a myriad of people on our program. And so you'll be able to learn from them um, and, and really get the latest um, technology and knowledge and even just approaches to navigate this, because this is one of those things that separates you know the, the high performers from the lackluster performing nonprofits. So Patricia, thank you. You have been amazing. And uh Mitch, I want to thank you. You have been great. Your first co-hosting day. Thank you for having me. It's awesome. It's great to meet you, Patricia. And again, thank you to all the sponsors that made this possible today. So that's Bloomerang, Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, 
Fundraising Academy, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMD Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Yes. Amazing. Thank this you. is amazing. Yeah, you've been you've been great. And I think you helped us understand how we can be working together in a more strategic and natural way. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's so many opportunities. Yes. So many. Well, thank so you. So many. Well, it's been great. Okay, Mitch. As a first or you know, first timer, do you want to do the sign off? Yes, I would love to. Thank everybody <laughs> for joining us and from from all of us at the nonprofit show. Stay well so you can do well. Hey, thanks everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you.